Now, I think we're going to go ahead and get started cooking. And the first thing we're going to do for you tonight is a pizza. And what we're doing is we're, this is, you guys seen the big green egg or whatever this contraption's called? So what this is is basically an outdoor oven. And it works very much like a wood-fired pizza oven. So it's a ceramic shell, so it holds heat in really nicely. And it doesn't even really get too hot on the outside. But it's about 600 degrees inside. So it's really hot, and we've got a nice uh, ceramic plate in there that we can, a stone plate that we can put the pizzas on and get a nice crispy crust on. So it's almost like an oven. And you can also open these up and really get them scorching hot to do a steak or something like that, or cool them way down to about 200, 250 degrees so that you can do a slow roasted cut of meat. We're going to talk a little bit about what cooking techniques you use for what kinds of meat and why. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to salt these things up. And what salt does is it's going to bring some of the juices and the flavors to the surface of the meat. And then when you grill it, it kind of gives that caramelization factor a little more kick. Okay? And we're going to be pretty liberal with the salt. Do we have salt in addition? Here, I'll just use that. And the other thing that we're going to use is kosher salt. Do you guys here use kosher salt? And the, I like kosher salt because it's got a little bit thicker texture, and it's a little easier to grab and work with in your, in your fingers. Okay? And it's not as powerful. Table salt really delivers a powerful salty punch. This is a little more subtle, so it is a little easier to manage when it comes to seasoning foods. So I'm going to take this, and I'm just really going to salt these suckers up pretty good, okay? And don't be afraid of it. It's going to be all right. You're not going to, you know, have to go into ER or anything like that. It's going to be fine. And then we're going to flip them over. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Now, I really like porterhouse steaks. The reason I like porterhouse steaks, who here likes filet mignon? Anybody? Okay, well, who here likes strip steaks? Okay, well, a porterhouse is two and one. One side is a strip steak and the other side is filet mignon. Okay? So when we look at this porterhouse steak, there's a bone at the bottom and there's a bone going up the middle here. Okay? This over here is filet mignon. That's the beef tenderloin. Okay? Then this, on this side, is a strip steak. Okay? And it's connected by the bone. And I really like grilling meats with the bone still on because the bone adds more flavor into the meat and it also gives you less surface area in touch with the grill so it keeps more of the meat at medium rare. Okay, so you tend to get a more flavorful, tender cut of meat when you're dealing with the bone on meat. Now, it is somewhat wasteful. You're buying a bone. Okay, remember that. You buy boneless stuff, you got, you're just paying for just the protein. And you can't get it all off the bone. So you have to cut around. So it's a little bit of an inconvenience, but I think it's more than made up for in flavor. Now I'm going to take these, I'll move them back to the table here.